All right, here we're going to start section 12.2, which is an overview of both the second and third line of defense. And so for this section, we're really going to be looking at objectives four through uh, five, really. And the remaining uh, objectives will be in section 12.3. So the overall really goals of both the second and third line of defense is to obviously provide protection to the person, but uh, the, how it's going to provide protection is going to be through surveillance, all right, just being able to survey the entire body as to what is going on, if there's any foreign invaders, if there are any problems, any disease, um, but really focused on the microorganisms that might come into the system, being able to recognize that a microorganism is foreign is very important. So it's going to recognize that there is an issue going on before it can do anything. And then ultimately, of course, it's going to be, the purpose is going to be there to destroy the entities that um, are categorized as foreign. Now, what we won't talk about too much, though, is that the third line of defense is also able to destroy materials such as cancer cells. All right, cancer cells are going to or derive themselves from your own cells, um, but they don't have a true function, and so therefore, really, they're going to be foreign. And some T cells that we'll talk about with the third line of defense are able to recognize the fact that those cells are, those cancerous cells are not normal and can then actually cause death for those cells. All right, one important feature of the um, second line of defense is that it definitely utilizes both the circulatory and lymphatic systems. And it's important to understand that the lymphatic and circulatory systems are separate. All right, they are different, but they work very much together with each other. On the left side, you see um, a diagram of the circulatory system, where body compartments are going to be screened by circulating white blood cells. And um, in that figure, you have the red veins or, or the red vessels including the arteries that are going to carry blood away from the heart and then the blue vessels and um, other vasculature are going to carry blood back to the heart towards the heart to the lungs so that it can become reoxygenated. In the middle you have the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a network of vessels they're going to extend throughout most of the body and they are there in order to be able to collect fluid that could have debris in it, that could have bacteria in it, and that fluid is going to be pulled back towards, <coughs> excuse me, towards back or moved back to the lymph nodes. <coughs> The lymph nodes are going to be locations of screening. And you have lymph nodes that are found throughout the body. You've got pelvic lymph nodes here. You have cervical lymph nodes. You have axillary lymph nodes, thoracic lymph nodes. And it's hard to actually see them, but they're just going to be small pockets of lymphatic tissue. Now, your tonsils are also lymphatic tissue. Your thymus that sits right on the top of the heart is lymphatic tissue. Your spleen is lymphatic tissue. And then in your gut, right, your digestive system, as well as your um, respiratory system, you have lymphoid tissue. All right, with the GALT that you see in the middle of the body here, GALT is gut-associated lymphoid tissue, and there's BALT for bronchial-associated lymphoid tissue. All of that tissue is specially placed 
in a location where the lymphatic vessels, so you see all the lymphatic vessels here, that fluid is going to make their way back to the inguinal lymph nodes and drain there. And the lymph nodes, the lymphatic tissue in general, is going to be full of immune cells, whether they are from the second line or from the third line of defense. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the picture here on the right shows um, the direction of the fluid movement between both systems. So the red and the blue are going to be the circulatory system moving blood either away from the heart or towards the heart, being oxygenated or non-oxygenated. And then the green uh, arrows are going to be the lymphatic vessel and lymphatic fluid is going to move back towards the heart. Um, it's going to drain into the lymph nodes wherever it crosses, whether it be in the leg here or in the arm draining in the axillary nodes. And that will eventually make its way into the um, um, cardiovascular system in the blood um, as that blood moves back to the heart. All right, so the second line of defense, you've got four major features, and they are generalized, they are nonspecific to a degree, and they're going to support and interact with the specific components of the immune response. And so these four major activities are going to be phagocytosis, inflammation, fever, and antimicrobial proteins. And that is just a big overview. So concept check here. For each of the barriers below, state whether it is a physical, chemical, or genetic barrier. I want you to think about that for about 10 seconds. All right, so A is hydrochloric acid of the stomach. All right, that is acid, so it will be a chemical. Sloughing of the skin. The purpose of sloughing of the skin is so that the skin that grows on, or sorry, the bacteria or the microorganisms that grow on the surface of the skin, as that skin sloughs off, it takes away, when the skin falls off, it takes bacteria cells that might be on that piece of skin or that skin cell that is coming off. And so therefore, by sloughing off of the skin, it actually limits the number, the amount of bacteria or microorganisms that grow and live on the skin. Lysozyme is found in the saliva and tears. It is a chemical. Mutations in the gene for genetic proteins, or for complement proteins, as I just said, is going to be a genetic barrier. All right, because even though complement may be part of the antimicrobial properties or antimicrobial proteins, if there's a mutation in the gene and those complement proteins do not work, it's going to be classified as a genetic issue. And then the ciliary escalator is going to be physical because you're talking about the cilia that are actively moving the mucus out of the respiratory tract. And so that is going to be a physical activity.